Okay, welcome to our Rose of West Haven session. Last session, our heroes were employed by Lord Draco of the small town of Porthcrawl to travel to a nearby henge where the ailing and seemingly slightly eccentric Lord insisted that they count the stones and that they look for a lens while they were doing it. Upon their arrival there, they found that there appeared to be an extra stone when the henge was viewed through a lens. And it, they speculated that it may be part of some form of arcane ritual that regularly requires repowering by having someone make contact with the stone. Two of the heroes, Sasha and Odrun, made contact with the stone and countered them, and they both suffered horrible horrible nightmares shortly afterwards where they dreamed of a a hideous creature seemingly made out of living scrolls like a papery robe or some sort of obscene blasphemous caricature of a monk striding between the worlds ripping its way into their world through the henge and enslaving or destroying all those it came across this rang a bell with William, and he identified the creature as the Lord of Words, a powerful demon. This leaves them in something of a dilemma, because if the protection around the henge is fading, how long will it be before this Lord of Words can break through into their world? But they have other things they also need to deal with. So it is at the start of the session we find them planning to explore the catacombs under the Church of Peaceful Repose with Lord Draco's blessing because they believe there may be cannibalistic humanoids of some variety lurking down there based on a previous hasty scouting mission. They withdrew rather than face these creatures unprepared and they are now preparing to push forward into the catacombs. As they walk through the church, led by William, who has been here several times before, he leads them effortlessly to the flagstone that can be pulled up and heads down into the catacombs. He lights his lantern as he does so, shaking it so the gloom bugs are agitated in the lantern and they begin to shed this soft emerald light around them illuminating the muscly thews of his companion Odran Molag who walks at the rear of the party stepping down the stone stairs between them is Sasha and her young protege Barden who unsurprisingly looks a little nervous but he's trying to put a brave face on it before we continue with the adventure I'm going to ask each of the players to introduce themselves and remind us of the salient points of their characters. So, in no particular order, we will go first from the rear of the party with the mighty Odran. So, hello, I'm Johannes P. Uh, since uh, there's two of us and I'm playing Odran Molag, he is uh, what passes for a savage <laughs> in, in this uh, place in time in this setting. Uh, he's from the Olden Vale, I think. That's the name of the place, yeah. Uh, and um, he is basically a, well, some sort of a shaman or a priest of Dagon, one of the old ones. And, um, yeah, he, uh, well, he's a big guy, uh, fairly loud, not that bright, that's that's him in a nutshell okay so we move to the next our heroes passing over young barden who is walking in front of odron and our camera stops for a few moments on the red haired figure of sasha of riverhead my name is dennis and i play sasha um a young red-headed woman who is uh, unsuccessfully has tried to masquerade as a poor orphan of the war, but uh, circumstances have led her to be recognized as a would-be adventurer. Um, She's taken on the mantle of the captain of the Lock Adventuring Company. 
Um, and she might have been devil in magic previously and accidentally summoned an ink demon once upon a time. And speaking of ink demons, as we move to the very front of the party, we find a young boy holding aloft a glowing, verdant, gloom bug lantern. It is William of Riverhead, and for a few moments, as the light plays across his elven leather armour, his face has a slightly cruel cast to it, but then the shadow passes, and he's little more than a young man again. Hello, I'm Johannes too, and um, I'm playing William of Riverhead, and I don't think I have to introduce much more of myself. I'm looking like a, um, like a li slightly chubby teenage boy, but I don't really act like it, and we already saw that he's something more than he, assumes, than he seems to be, and he acts as the scout of the group mostly. Okay, splendid. Thank you very much. So the first thing we are going to do, since we're operating on a dungeon scale now, is I'm going to ask each of you to roll your initiative. It's just a d6, right? That is correct. As the Morton Joe would say, mediocre. But for all of us. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it, it's pretty good since you'll all effectively be like going at the same time. So in terms of planning, it's actually quite good. And I've only rolled a three for NPCs. So. There we go. Could certainly be worse. It certainly could indeed. So... As you all begin to make your way down into the catacombs, you can see the green light from William's Lantern shines down this corridor directly ahead of, ahead of you. Any of you who have been here previously, which certainly includes William, knows that you can just about make out small side passages which branch off into small chambers where there is statutory and the burial catacombs for the ancient nobles who once ruled over this area. It's a large noble family crypt. Although, you know from having been down here previously, William, that it's obviously not been used for quite some time. There's a lot of moss growing between the cracked flagstones down here. Uh, the, the, the whole place is in a little bit of a sorry state. Yeah. Um... I told, tell the group what I already saw, pretty much what you just explained, and I would add that they should let me go first and just walk right behind me and don't step anywhere where I, don't, uh, where I haven't stepped yet. Don't touch anything, I look at Baden especially, and um, always, if you want to um, touch something, use your 10-foot pole, I've got two. I would hand someone a 10-foot pole if someone has, wants it. Splendid. So I've moved you to the top of the initiative order, William, because it makes sense you've got the lantern, you're going yeah. first. What we'll do, though, is since you're all effectively going simultaneously, if at any point in time you guys were like, oh, we, I want Sasha and Audrin to go first, or we want Audrin to go first, followed by me and Sasha, just let me know and we'll tweak those around. Because you're all effectively going simultaneously, really. It's just for convenience that we're sort of choosing the order that you go in. Um, do we go in, in turns now? So in normal six seconds Indeed, we will be chunks? Going, we will be okay. progressing in turns. So okay. it's over to you. It's it's only really because we're sort of in a, a dungeon that we're okay. sort of going in turns. So um, William. I would I would start going here, light shining my light into the both the sideways here. And um, say to the others that they should take a look inside. Okay, so as you reach the intersection, the rest of you, you hear William saying that you should take a look inside. Obviously, where he is at the minute, he's trying to get maximum light on the area. You can see, if any of you move up, the, the flickering green light reveals these small chambers. They're about 
15 foot by 15 foot and if any of you move in you will see that there are a couple of statues in there and what appear to be three sarcophagi in each of the chambers so William said that you sh you guys should move up and check out what's going on so Sasha if you would like to move yourself and Barden Okay, so as you move up, you can see what I've described, these two chambers, one on either side. Obviously, the corridor continues ahead of you, but looking into the chamber to your right, so this chamber here, as you're facing the back wall, you can just about make out two stone statues in there, and one of it to be three long stone coffins or sarcophagi. Looking into the chamber to your left, it appears to be of similar dimensions, almost mimicking the one that you're looking at. However, the one on the left of you doesn't have two statues, but it does still have three of the stone coffins. Okay, Audrin. Right. Well... Mm. So, Sasha, what is there anything specific you guys are doing uh, where you are right now? Mm, just looking around, taking a sweep and do, uh, through the rooms. Right, Cesar, well. Cesar, Cesar will look at William. Where were all the creatures at? I didn't see anyone yet, anything yet, but I haven't been too far in. I point down the um, the corridor, and I'm just like a couple of steps more in, and I didn't touch anything yet. So. Okay. Okay. So what is the plan here? The plan is to, to examine every room. Yeah. Okay. So which one do we pick first? The one without mm. the statue. I would say otherwise, but we could I, try I the see. one. <laughs> which, which one is that? This one yeah. is this one. one. Yeah. Which? Yeah, that's not confusing <laughs> that, at all. That's one. That one is the one without statues. Okay. Yeah. I, I imagine at this point, as Audrin's walked down, and he's like, "Oh, which, which of these rooms? You know, no, my, my I, I can't really see into them." And the two yeah. of you are like, "This one, this yeah. one." And he's like, "Just, that, just that pick way. one." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll uh, I'll try and squeeze to the entrance. Mm -hmm. Like next to Sasha, so like there. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. As you peer into this room that's only partially illuminated by the lantern for, that William is holding, you can't see into the shadowy corners of it. You can just about make out in the flickering emerald light these three stone sarcophagi. Each of the lids, also made out of stone, has been carved to resemble a serene figure. Most of them are wearing armor or warrior's garb. They have their arms crossed over their chests and a sword, obviously not an actual sword, it's part of the carving, but a sword clasped under their hands, running down the length of their body. Their eyes are closed and their face is a mask of serene repose. Would there be any, of course I know the light doesn't carry too well into the room as of yet, at, at least not with me in the way, but um, is there any writing anywhere that can be seen? Okay, you would be able to see that there are, that there is writing on the actual sarcophagi, like the, the, the names of the people uh -huh. and like mention of their deeds is carved in the base of around the side of the sarcophagus. There doesn't appear to be any actual writing on the walls or anything similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see that from the names that you can see, you can see that this would appear to be the the burial place of the noble Harper family. And each of these three sarcophagi that you can see lists like the name of a different Harper and so like what they were known for. You know, this this person was known for their piety. This person was known for their ferocity in battle, etc. Yeah, so it's like Roderick the pious did such and such in the year of our Lord. Indeed, exactly. Yeah. So I take a, another step into the room, take a closer look. 
Okay. And I, <clears throat> I uh, say over my shoulder, this is the, this is the place where the relatives of that, that lord are buried. I, I guess Cause it says Harper here. Mm. Yeah, I already saw this too. Yeah, but I'm I'm checking the place out, John, for my thing on this turn. Just okay. That's that's looking absolutely around. fine. You look around. You can see that this place doesn't appear to have been used for quite some time. The the sort of death dates on the sarcophagi are, are all sort of eighty years plus mm -hmm. prior to present day. There are cobwebs hanging from the ceiling you can see that molds and lichen of various kinds have started to creep in through cracks in the stonework and there is a slight feeling of damp in the chamber as perhaps the the water from the, the sort of like the soil above has started to infiltrate it through the the cracks since this place doesn't seem to be being maintained very well uh Arjun isn't super intelligent but something strikes him as being odd with the dates that he he wants to try and figure out is there like a logical line of harpers that would allow for the current lord to exist like is there a gap like is are we talking like he's 150 years old right okay <laughs> look looking at the dates you can find <laughs> It, obviously, you can only see three of them at the minute, mm -hmm. but the last date you can find in there will indicate that the last person put in this chamber, mm -hmm. which you may you may know that the the tradition with these places was to sort of start far off and sort of work your way back. So you'd mm -hmm. expect the people who were buried most recently to be sort of nearer to the front, pretty much. Mm -hmm. the The last person you can find buried in here was seventy five years ago. Which mm -hmm. obviously in this time period, like most humans, don't live to be seventy-five. Mm -hmm. And although he looks quite ill and quite sort of pale, Draco Harper doesn't look seventy-five. Mm -hmm. But this place hasn't been used for some time, so it's possible that they yeah. could have, they could have just switched to burying elsewhere. But you can't find anyone in here more recent than seventy-five years. Yep, and I uh, I mentioned that that. It doesn't like it seems that the Lord has buried his parents somewhere else. These are all too old. Yeah, it's already moss on most of these, so I I'm maybe not surprised. A, maybe he's an imposter. Now Willem go in and illuminate for him and she pushes Willem slightly towards the thing. Sure. Um I think the NPC's got to turn first. Yeah, the, since effectively Barden's being moved by Sasha, there aren't really any NPCs to speak of at the moment. Okay, so we'll go in and try to illuminate the complete room. So I'll start, just step in the middle and try to poke all the three graves with my 10-foot pole. That is absolutely fine. You tap, tap, tap on the top of the three sarcophagi with your 10-foot pole. You hear the hollow ringing sound of stone, as you would expect. Obviously, you're not surprised that it's hollow. It's a, it's a coffin, effectively. But there's nothing untoward happens as you tap on the top of them. Okay. Um, I will pull out my crowbar and hand it to Aldrin. So are we are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Sure. That's why we are here. Just so hang on. <clears throat> Tasha pulls up her scarf in front of her mouth, and uh, if uh, Baden has a scarf too, she'll pull his up yeah, and cover. Yeah, I do that mouth. too. I uh, <clears throat> I start looking for any sort of light. I, I presume the lids are from stone, right? Yeah, so I'm, I start to look for the line where I could put the crowbar in, and I, I turn back, but I go, uh, you, you two know more about this, this ridiculous one god that they worship around here. Mm -hmm. uh, are the funerary rites particularly impressive? Is there? Do we need to fear curses or 
or the like. I think the dead always have curses. No, I, I'm, I'm fine with the dead. I mean, the. I don't you know. think they would do this in their own crypt. Uh, it's just folk tales and hearsay. Indeed, but there's no curses. Both, both William and yourself, Sasha, as well as Borden, would know that although there is, there is a lot of ceremony that goes on with Church of West Haven funerals, it's it's very much that they believe that once the once the the spirit leaves the body, it ascends to heaven to to be with God, or it is taken to hell by the devil, depending on whether the person's led a good life. However, they do believe that at a time in the future there will be a day of judgment when the world will end effectively and all the dead will rise to face like a final judgment. And they believe that in order for them to rise successfully and not be condemned to a, a sort of limbo or purgatory, they have to preserve the bodies. I don't mean preserve them as in mummifying them, but the bodies have to be whole. They can be they can be skeletal, they can be corpses, but they have to be whole. That's why if you can afford it, like if you're a noble family, you build these nice big sarcophagi and these burial places so no one can disturb the bones of your ancestors. Where if you're a poor person, unfortunately, you'd like that. But if you're lucky, you might get buried in an unmarked grave somewhere and maybe you won't get your body robbed. It's it's unfortunate and it's unfair, but it is the way of life. In that's a cool, that's a cool detail, John. That's pretty much like it is in the Jew and Jewish religion too. Yes. No. Yeah. That's the reason why Jesus was buried in a uh, in this open grave with the stone before it. Indeed. Why do we put them in wooden boxes then? It, it's a bit of a long story in that okay. way. Yeah, I was going to so, say uh, it, it, it's, it's probably it, outside the scope of this session to. to we pause into... this game to go into theology. Indeed. <laughs> Okay, okay, so what no, was... I don't think there's any curses," <clears throat> she says to Ogren. And um, I mean, you are you are you are savage. She uses air quotes anyway. So you're not really in on the whole thing, right? And you have to believe in order to be affected by it, right? No, I don't. That that's not how it works. <laughs> okay, I don't believe in his god, and he. I think he healed me once. So but that's because you believe in him. If I you do. didn't believe in him, you wouldn't be here. The gods don't... I, they don't need us <laughs> to do anything. Whilst you're having this conversation, and you're sort of shaking your head saying the gods don't need us, Audrey, <laughs> you've been sort of looking around the sarcophagi with the this crowbar mm -hmm. in your hand, and you can see there is actually like a very sort of like thin seal where the, the stone top has been placed on it. It takes you a little while, but you manage to sort of wiggle the, the end of the crowbar into this seam. Although you can feel just by sort of like testing it a little that obviously this stone lid is extremely heavy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we probably talk a little bit more about how it doesn't matter what we believe. The gods are real, even the ridiculous one that these guys think is the only one. And that's the reason enough to be like wary of these places because this is essentially the domain of the one god but okay, no, uh, stop stop if, yep. if that's true we shouldn't do this what, what do you mean why they have been put here under the blessing of the one god right and if you say the one god is i presume so it's true and he doesn't need us to believe in him in order to work his miracles and mm -hmm. curses, mm -hmm. then we probably shouldn't do it. Then we shouldn't do anything because we don't know what this fucking god will do. Yeah, but the, you, the now key obviously, was to disturb the dead. Obviously, William, you've got something of a of a slightly, let, let's say, to, to, to be kind, let's say, biased opinion on God in character. Yes. And <laughs> you would know, one of one of the things that um, you, you're extended family have sort of like brought up as one of their grievances previously against the whole religion thing is the fact that it 
it seems to be funny how it's supposed to be if you lead you lead a good life that you know you'll get a nice burial you'll go to heaven you'll be resurrected into the life ever after after judgment day however yeah it, it's it's an odd coincidence that there seems to be a direct correlation between who's got the most silver and who gets the the nicest and most secure grave sites despite all their the priests pontifications that Oh yeah, you know you, you're suffering in this life, peasant. So you'll get a you'll get a glorious afterlife. But uh, when when you die, you'll be lucky if you get like your body dropped in a ditch. Yeah. Also, mostly the um, we get mostly poor people to join our ranks. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mo because only desperate people become like we uh, like uh, something. I am so. Mm. Okay, if you've got uh, money or not, that's... Audrey, can I ask <laughs> what your strength is, please? Um, yeah, 16. 16, yeah. Okay, so are you going to try and pop the lid off the sarcophagus? or? Yeah, but before I do that, I want to uh, like get some pebbles mm -hmm. and try and put them in the small like opening that I do before I start like really going at it um, so that I have a like a... Just small the, elevation on the edge. The 10-foot poles are metal, right? That's correct. So metal we could use... pole. Who makes 10-foot metal poles and why? There's, there's a few small specialist crafters in a few small villages. It's a spe... Artisan poles. Yeah, it's a, spe... it's a specialist po item. Normally they are lantern posts. Yeah. <laughs> It's yep. because it's because Will is heavy metal, so he to, to, exactly. To, to be fair, if he'd have wanted some more, he probably could have tapped Jasper up for some, because obviously he carries a lot of lanterns around. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if especially if you're like grubbing around in the swamps looking for gloom bugs, it's far easier to put your lantern on the end of a pole, stick it I'm... in the ground, and then you haven't got to worry about holding it or dropping it in the water. Just saying, I've got a nice lever here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, let's see what I can do with the, the crowbar first. Yeah. Okay, it takes you a little while, and there are beads of sweat glistening on your muscles as you heave this crowbar. But after a few moments, there is a... And you've levered it up sufficiently that you're able to like push the lid off, at which point its own weight takes over, pulls it the rest of the way, and there is a... As it falls onto the floor next to the sarcophagus that as this happens there is a sort of a musty slightly damp smell emanates from the sarcophagus and from where you are Audran, you can see that inside the sarcophagus is a body that appears to have been wrapped in sort of muslin burial robes you can see from the sort of staining on the robes that obviously this body that have sort of faded away, this body has obviously been interred here for quite some time. And you can tell by the way that the, the cloth is lying that there's probably little more than bones being held together by the cloth. Uh, bring the light closer. Let's see. Let's see what we have. <laughs> yeah, I will just hold my lantern up above it and try to um, unwrap him a bit with a stick or something to don't, so I don't have to touch that. Okay, that is absolutely fine. As you're, as you're looking at the, the body, the, the cloth in the light that's now being shone closer, you can see that, like a lot of things around here, it looks as though, with the stonework not having been maintained, eventually lichen and mosses and plants sort of work on even the hardest of stone and cause cracks to form. And this has obviously happened with this sarcophagus. You can see what appears to be a few small patches of common mould that are growing in there. You can also see what appear to be a number of very small green mushrooms that are growing out of one of the, the larger damp patches on the cloth. But there's nothing, no items or something he's wearing, because sometimes I think they are buried with their personal possessions. You can't see any grave goods at the moment. However, it's possible that if it's like rings or anything like that, it may actually be with inside the cloth. You've not yet unwrapped the body. Mm. 
I will continue to do so. Okay, that's so you, you start unwrapping the body. Yeah. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Can you please make me a save versus poison? Of course. Poison. No bonus. I have got something up, um, above my um, nose and you, you will mouth. get a plus two bonus. Okay. Failure. Okay. You take two hit points of damage as you're sort of unwrapping this body. It disturbs these these mushrooms, these fungus, and this mold that are growing from it. And a, there's a and like a cloud of spores fills the air around you. You breathe some of them in, taking the damage, and you're sort of you're reduced to sort of like racking coughs. <coughs> 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 I will just hand my lantern to um, Sasha and pull out my um, water skin and try to drink a bit of it. Yeah, you, you feel much better as you're doing that. The It's only a brief, like, pfft, the spore cloud doesn't linger in the air. It disperses fairly quickly. So it's only because you were, like, sort of in there, like, pulling the, the robes aside that you've been exposed to it. Okay. Uh, does someone else want to continue? Yeah, what's Sasha up to? What Sasha is up to? She's just standing there, watching you two. Unless right. something horrible happened. Well, you, you've just seen that uh, William attempted to unwrap like the cloths around this body. And he disturbed a patch of mold and these green mushrooms, yeah. and like a cloud of spores sprayed his, in his face, and he's been like <coughs> for a few seconds. Then he's like drinking his water to try and like swill his mouth out. You okay? Yeah, I um, throw up a bit of my um, food and doesn't look too happy. Uh, okay. I hate this body. <laughs> You see, Ben, this is why we cover our faces. I did. However, before the spores got to you, you had sort of like unwrapped a portion of the body. And you sort of got a look at that portion before you were forced to like pull back, coughing, William. And you saw what appeared to be a skeletal arm that was sort of like sort of falling to pieces as you unwrapped it. It's only the cloth holding it together, and you did notice what appeared to be a gold ring on its middle finger. Hmm. <coughs> uh, a, a ring. Okay. Can't you check the, the skeleton? <coughs> yeah, okay. The, uh, to carefully go over to where she can peek into the, into the coffin. See if you can see anything glimmering. Which one was it? The middle one? Yeah. Okay, so as you peer I'll, into... I will the... move away. Yeah, so. that's grand. As you peer into the coffin, Sasha, you can actually see, as I've described, this sort of semi-disintegrated skeletal hand sort of out of this wrapping where William had unwrapped it. And you can see that on its middle finger it's just a, a plain silver ring it appears to have something small inscribed on the top of it but you at the distance right you can't actually see it unless you were like leaning right over the coffin okay <clears throat> she will um, put down her backpack and take out uh, one of the the crappy bottles of wine she has okay uncork it and then kind of hold her thumb over the the hole and sprinkle w uh, wine over the over the linen to see if that somehow makes the mushrooms be less brittle. Okay, you sprinkle wine over the muslin. You don't think you're in too much danger from the mushrooms now, because effectively William had already sort of like knocked them aside when he'd disturbed the linen, and it was only like a couple of small patches, so you think you're, you're not in much danger at the moment. Okay. Then she will carefully... No, she'll break off the finger and take the finger and the ring. 
Okay, you you sort of peel back a little bit more of the wrappings. You take this silver ring off the finger, and as you're sort of holding it up to the light... You, you said gold ring. Sorry, gold ring. My apology. It's just because the prop I'm using is silver. I mean, I'm easily led. As you're looking at the... I mean, let me let me take a gold ring off my finger. <laughs> there Just we go. say it. Gold, gold is my value, Bill. As as you're looking at the the plain gold ring, it is almost entirely plain, like a plain gold band. Yeah. On the top of it, though, is a small symbol of a fish inscribed on it, and on the inside of the ring is inscribed the name Roderick the Pious. It's a fairly plain ring, but you think. It, it'd probably be worth at least sort of 10, 15 gold pieces. Okay. And gold is, is a lot in this system, right? It's 10 times a, uh, 10 silver, 1 gold, right? No, it's slightly different. Just hold on a second, then I'll tell you uh, what 20, it is. 20 silver is 1 gold. That's it. So. Wow. <clears throat> Okay. But, but, we can't, but we obviously can't sell it in this certain town, so... Probably not, no. So she'll take the finger out of the ring and uh, hand it uh, hand it to uh, William unless he's still... Okay, as, as you sort of like, as you're sort of removing the ring, the the bony finger that was inside it pretty much crumbles to dust. And you're just able to remove the ring and hand it over to William, if that's what you wish. See, Baden, this is kind of like a community service we're doing here. Because B Barden, the living need, needs more gold than the dead. Baden cr crosses himself and says, uh, but, but I, I, I can see what you're saying, Miss Sasha, but uh, oh, it, it, it just don't seem right stealing from the dead, uh, especially not brave warriors, he says. Well, it might not be right if you ask the the church or the rich nobles who has us fighting against each other so they can get more land and more gold. But if you ask the hungry fisher or his wife, it certainly is the right thing to do because this means they will live another winter. Okay, it it takes you a little while, but during the course of this conversation, you you pretty much have convinced Barden of what you're saying, and by the end of it, he's like, "Well, I, I I do see what you mean. I mean, after all, I suppose uh, Sir Roderick is sitting at the the right hand of the Lord now, and uh, well, there are pe there are people down here who are who are starving, and uh, well, I'm, I'm sure that that gold ring could buy an awful lot of food for them. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, yes, I, I think you're probably right, Miss Sasha. It's the social economic economics of the thief. She doesn't say that, but." Yeah, that that would rather undermine your argument if you said that at the end of it. <laughs> okay, so since we, since we already that? have to serve this great piece in in this sarcophagus, can we see anything else glittering? Okay, as you sort of unwrap it fully, you can also see that the body appears to have been laid atop, so lying on top of a sword. Perhaps the weapon of Sir Roderick has been buried along with him. You can't see anything obviously special about the sword. It's just a a, a normal sword. It's it's quite well crafted, but probably not particularly valuable. It's it's a warrior's weapon meant to be used rather than a, a sort of ceremonial weapon, which is what might lead you to conclude that it, it's perhaps the weapon he used in life rather than one that was specially commissioned to be buried with it. Okay. And yeah. since it's for, uh, 75 years old, I'm guessing it's not in the best condition. No. You okay, well... You also find what appeared to be a... A number of offerings, most uh, are sort of silver coins, etc. You find effectively 20 silver pieces worth of, sort of other offerings and assorted stuff that you you think you could probably sell. Although, and it's it's less identifiable than the ring. It's just like, you know, people who came to wish him well and have like put a coin in there to, to symbolize the wealth and eternal glory that he'll have in heaven. 
a, a few sort of small knickknacks, etc. Okay, well, we'll take that too. That's fine. So you've got 20, 20 GP worth of grave knickknacks. Oh, GP, I thought you said silver. Sorry, silver pieces. I will get I will get silver pieces and gold the right way around at some point tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I added them to our um, plunder. Splendid. Okay, so what, what are you doing now, guys? Hmm. Well, Do you want I... me to get the, the other two? Or... Yes. I okay. mean, if we started, we could else might as well end it. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, um, Sasha will pick up the the bony finger and put back in the in the in the coffin. Mm -hmm. We should put the lid on again, I think. Uh, John, is that a thing, or is the lid like squarely on the floor? Because if it is, then <laughs> the lid the lid isn't squarely on the floor. It's like a full at an angle. So you can probably sort of grab one end of it, and lift mm. that end up, and swing it back round. Yeah. It'll yeah. take you a bit of grunting and heaving, but and it'll play a couple of minutes. But you, okay. you'll get okay. it done. Sasa yeah. will help him do that. I won't. I'm still coughing. Yeah. So we we close the first one and uh, proceed to try and open the second one, the middle one, I guess. Okay, so you go to have a look at the middle one, and since I, mm. since I, so you go to have a look at the second one. Since you, I cribbed the the name for the first one from the description that Johannes gave. I'm going to ask uh, our other Johannes, Johannes E. Would you care to suggest a name for the occupant of this second coffin? Obviously, we know their last names are like Harper, but they all have these these sort of declarations on them, like Roderick the Pious, etc. Would you care to suggest a name, oh. Hannessy? Willie Gert. How do you pronounce that? Willie Gert the Brave. Willie Gert? Okay, Willie Gert. Well, we're going to pronounce it Willie Gert for this game. I'm not sure if that's historically right, but there you go. So, Willie Gert the Brave. So... Again, it's a figure clad in full armor, although this time on his, on the sort of carving of him, the, the sculpture of him, he's actually, instead of having a sword where his arms are crossed, in one hand he's holding a large flail. I'm looking up the uh, name, gen uh, name generator for old name, for old English names. Okay, so, Audrin, are you taking the lid off Willie Gertz? Yeah, <clears throat> presuming it, it works the same way. Yeah, it does indeed. It it takes you a while, and obviously you guys are being like very noisy down here while you're doing mm -hmm. this, and the the sound that you're making as these stone lids are crashing down is just like echoing through the halls of these catacombs. But after a few moments, again, there is this as you lever the stone lid off, making sure to sort of leave it at an angle so you can put it back on later if you wish. So, how's Willigert doing? Okay, you can see that Willigert, rather like Roderick, is also wrapped up in linen cloth. However, in this case, he's actually wearing armour, and he's been sort of wrapped up in linen and then put into his armour. Whereas, obviously, perhaps Roderick the Pious wasn't quite such a warrior as the sword suggested. He was just, like, in his robes, effectively. Whereas you can see that Willigert appears to be wearing a suit of chain armour. Hmm. Does it appear to be growing in mushrooms or something? There don't appear to be any mushrooms here, no. Hmm. Chainmail is not that bad. I'm not sure. What what does Odrin currently wear for, wear for armor? Uh, Odrin has the... Let me open the thing. Um, he he has the royalist breastplate, breastplate yeah. which is a chainmail. Yeah. And it's 70 years old, so... Unless they really treated it well. 
it's not looking in the best of condition to be perfectly honest it looks as though it was obviously again it was a, a suit of armor that he wore rather than a ceremonial one so it's already it looks like it was probably already missing a few links of chain when they put it in here but it's not been cared for like i said there's a bit of rust on it it's certainly not in the best of conditions <clears throat> see if he has any necklace or anything else like that nobles like to wear that stuff she says to Ogren. Uh, does he have a like a helmet of some sort? Okay, indeed he does have a helmet. And I'll tell you exactly what type it is. Just give me a moment. Mm. Okay, you can see he has a what is called a Morian helmet on. It's a metal helmet. Is that like a full face helmet? Well, there's there's different variations. It's a conquistador like type deal. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, as as Johannes has said. It's sort of like it covers the top of the head. Then it has the rim around it, and it quite often has a sort of like another piece of metal on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, so I I scoop Willigert's head with the uh, helmet uh, and try to see if there's a necklace of some sort in there. Okay, you lift his head up. He doesn't appear to be wearing a necklace that you can see. However, you, you are going to be very careful because like the, the other occupant, he's pretty much just like dust and bones. Mm -hmm. But you don't see any necklace or anything. No, I don't. I don't think this man was prone to that sort of thing. It seems more like a warrior. I say to Shasha. Hmm. He looks a bit disappointed. No interesting weapons or anything. You know that previously with the with Roderick, his weapon was put underneath him. Now it's possible that may be a tradition of the Harper family. So each noble family tends to have their own sort of traditions that get that add on to and embellish the normal funerary traditions. Now also, obviously you'd have to lift the body up to mm -hmm. to see that. Also it's really old stuff, Will. I mean But it's not newly made. And while you say that, I, I'm in the background. I basically use his chainmail as a bag. So I just bundle it up. <laughs> For the bones? And lift it up. <laughs> nice. So, so much for respecting the dead. <laughs> okay, so you, for want of a better term, you bag him up and <laughs> yeah. lift him out of the coffin. And as you do so, you can see that there is what appears to be a flail. Again, it's in quite sort of poor condition, uh -huh. but it is a, quite a large flail that is sort of, has been placed underneath the body. You can see it's one of those ones that has like three heads on it attached by chains. Uh, fancy. Indeed, it looks like once it must have been very well crafted, but unfortunately with the, the passage of time and with no one caring for it, it's not in terribly good condition anymore. For all those enemies who have three heads. Indeed, you never know when you're going to run across a Hydra or a Cerberus or something similar. Exactly. Do we want to... Uh, it's a two it or... is, it, is it a two-handed weapon? Indeed, it is a two-handed weapon. You can mm. see that as as you're sort of like because obviously you're a bit a lot closer to the body now, given that you've effectively just like bundled it up in a bag, <laughs> you, you can t you can tell that mm. Willigerd must have been like back in the day when he was alive. He must have been like a massive fellow. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, even though he's lost all of his flesh, his bones are like heavy enough as you're sort of lifting him up, and you can see that what to Willigerd might have just been like a normal flail. To, to even you, someone like yourself, this is like a, a double-handed weapon. Mm. It's what's commonly known as a great weapon. Wow. Or a Zweihander. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Although I was led to believe they were more sort of like swords, but yeah, yeah. Least they are. Yeah, plumbers. Um, I think I'm gonna because it's the haft on it has to be massive if it's for a massive dude, right? Yeah, it, it's 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 thick. Yeah, so I'm gonna get that. Uh, I'm gonna pick the flail up from there and <laughs> just lay the bag back in. Okay. Well, while the boys are looking at the weapons, Sasha will take the crowbar and go here and uh, pry just, open the last one. Just for game terms, a great weapon deals d10 damage, and it's worth about 50 silver. That's correct. However, I'm all I am going to say that given the poor condition it's in. And until you can get it to someone who can give it some tender, loving care, if it is used in combat and a one is rolled, the weapon will break due to its poor condition. Okay. Makes so, sense. Since it's Johannes who's real weak, it will be the very first combat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll probably die. Oh, the one on the attack roll or the damage? <laughs> it's one on the attack roll. At least a better chance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Sasha, you go over to the remaining sarcophagus in here. You put the crowbar under the, the lip of the lid and you start heaving on it. Can I ask what your strength is, please? 16. Oh. <laughs> okay. Random threat. <laughs> okay, you, pr you, you pretty much... As, as, as Johannes said, Sasha was with the demonic strength. <laughs> You pretty much put all your weight behind it, and Barden starts running forward, going, "Oh, Miss Sasha, let me help you." And then, as he says that, you're just like, <laughs> and just like pop the lid off, and he's like, "Oh, oh uh. he's like, damn." Yeah, pr pretty much. You can see as as you like flip this lid off fairly effortlessly, his eyes are like wide, and he's got that sort of like hero worship look on his face as he's like looking at you. He probably even lets out a small sigh. I'm 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 whispering to him. All adventurers are that way. You should whisper to Tony. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since you have popped the lid off this coffin, uh, Sasha, would you care to give a name and a moniker to the person? Or if you can't think of a name, I can click on my random Anglo-Saxon name generator. I've uh, just I've just found two more uh, um, a Shakespearean name generator and a 19th century English name generator. Nice. Uh, no, Austin the Errant. Austin the Errant. Okay. Okay. So as you were as you're sort of flipping the lid off and you're looking at this, you can see that the the person who died in here, Austin the Errant was obviously fairly young i mean we're sort of talking like sort of early to mid teens when he actually died since the the carving is very very young almost boyish looking young man he's wearing a suit of plate armor on the carved statue with robes hanging down from it he looks every inch like a a, a holy warrior who might have been sent to to far shores to battle against the enemies of the church. You can see that on the, the carving of him, he wears, uh, he wears a, a religious emblem around his neck and his hands, instead of just being crossed over with a sword underneath them, his hands are actually held like that in a, in a motion of prayer with the sword on the carving clasped between them. Oh, like a Knight Templar. Indeed. As you look inside, you can see that there, this figure is still wearing its suit of plate armor. You can see that the it is also wrapped in this muslin cloth. You can't see any sign of a sword, but you would guess it's probably placed underneath the body like the other two have. Um, just looking at it, and a mushroom is growing. You can see that some damp has seeped in here, and there are indeed a, a few of these small green mushrooms sprouting on the sort of edge of the stonework and the muslin cloth. Okay. So, and he's clad in um, 
in the plate armor. Indeed, he's wearing a suit of plate armor. Does he wear gauntlets too? Yeah, it's the full suit, the full kit and caboodle. It, it's got a bit of rust on it, but it, it's, it could probably be salvaged. This person is Austin the Errant. Okay, she so will take the wine bottle and um, hold her breath while still maintaining the mask and pour, uh, sprinkle a little over one mushroom to see if it has any effect. Okay, you sprinkle some wine over one of these mushrooms. It doesn't appear to have any noticeable effect on it. Does it seem like it's soaking in the wine? It, it, does, it does seem like it's soaking it up. Yeah. Okay. So try to give it a little more to see it, so it becomes sort of saturated. Yeah. Yeah. You you dribble a little bit more of this wine on, and after a while, you can see that this this mushroom that was previously looked a little bit sort of dried and almost sort of like half preserved, it slowly starts to look a little plumper and more hydrated as it's absorbing this liquid that you're dripping onto it. And suddenly, it grows big and attacks us. <laughs> You've been looking at my notes again, haven't you? <laughs> it's a drunk mushroom monster. <laughs> okay, how, uh, does he have enough wine to do that with all the mushrooms here? Or? Well, th there's only like a, f a few of them. The rest is just like mold. So, yeah, okay. you, you've got enough wine to like soak these mushrooms in. We, how, were you using a bottle of like cheap wine that you got? Was the it? cheapest wine you got, yeah. Okay, so in order to like fully saturate these these like three sort of like quite fairly sized mushrooms it's going to take you like all the wine in that bottle so if okay, you're willing to spend cool. that bottle of cheap wine that's fine i am that's cool it's it's cheaper than hp mm -hmm. and once he's um, content that they are well doused she will um Oh, so oh take... they are well doused now. They look plump, the juicy. To be honest, if you haven't seen the effect on William of like, some of these mushrooms, they almost look good enough to eat. Maybe they are. Okay, I guess we, we will check the, all of them, right? She looks over at uh, her companions. Sure. Doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it, it does seem like it is worth it. Yeah. So very carefully, she will take a knife and mm -hmm. she will cut off the stem of one of the mushrooms That's fine. and carefully move it over to the lid on the middle coffin and she will do that with all of them unless they explode and kill her, of course. No, that's fine. As you as you sort of cut through the stem of it, there's like this wet squelching sound. As you cut through them, you can actually now see like the, some liquid like dribbling out of the stem and you can smell the... You can smell the sort of sourness of the cheap wine you, you that they absorbed that you poured into them, mixed with the slight sort of earthy notes of the mushrooms themselves. But as you saw through it, there's no release of spores or anything like that. It smells a bit unpleasant, but that's it. Mm. You, you place the mushrooms on the lids as you've specified. Yes, and then she will take off the gauntlets and the gauntlet on the right hand of the of Austin. Okay, you take off the right gauntlet from Austin the Errant's body. As you do, basically just like dust pours out of it as, oh. as sort of like the ends of his fingers that they'd obviously chosen not to wrap his hands because they couldn't sort of fit them in the gauntlet with the yeah. wrapping on. But as you pull it off, the bones are inside, just crumble to dust and pour out of the end of it like sands from an hourglass okay what about the leather in the gauntlet is that completely dried up to it, it it's pretty much dried and perished away to be honest but you can see that like the the spots where you would fasten leather on are still in okay condition given how long they've been down here if you got it to a leather workers they could probably fit some new leather to it and it'd probably be quite wearable okay well she will um Pick at the letter, see if there's any rings hidden in the gauntlet. Okay, you don't find any rings in the gauntlet. Okay, well, so basically proceed to take the armor apart and uh, give it each piece as she, she gets it off. 
uh, and cleans it for bone dust to will. Yeah, we will, I, will, I will pull it all in a big sack. Okay, that is absolutely fine. The armor is not wearable at present due to the the condition of it. However, if you can get it to someone like an armor smith who can repair such things, it could be it could be repaired and will be fully usable in the future. So you now have a full suit of plate armor. So when when she gets to it, is there a weapon underneath as well? You do indeed find a sword underneath. There's nothing particularly noteworthy about it, uh, other than the fact that on the the, sort of the hilt of it, there is a the religious symbol of the Church of West Haven on there, which reaffirms your original idea that he was probably some form of crusader. Okay. You know that yeah. I, you know that a lot of these holy warriors, instead of like wearing th their their symbol around their neck they would have it on their sword to remind them that they wielded their weapons in the name of god okay since that's the case is the pommel stone piece is that um, is that made of silver or is it steel too it's steel okay well so let it be then it's what what kind of weapon was it sorry it's just a a medium sword oh okay a broad sword or something right yeah i i i um i um Put in the full the suit and the flail and our list of loot. Um, just asking because it is doesn't stand anywhere as far as I can see. Well, how much does a suit of armor wear? How much uh, weigh? Well, let me just have a look. I'll see if I can find that for you. Because normally it's just one for normal items, but I don't think a full plate armor is worth one. Well, it's a, uh, it's um, what do they call it? They call it an it's oversized, like an oversized oh. item. Yeah. Yeah. I'm checking. One second. Oversized. All right, here we go. Here's how it works. If a character is wearing plate armor, they gain two points of encumbrance. Even if I'm not wearing it on myself. Oh, if you put it in in a backpack and carry that, it will count as an oversized object. Yeah. Two points of encumbrance, so I get, get do go up two points of my encumbrance points. That's fucking annoying. I'm at lightly encumbered currently, and I would be severely encumbered if I wear you this shit. You can drag it out and just let it be by the stairs. We don't. Have yeah, to I think it. that's a, I think that's the best idea here. We I don't just have... I just <laughs> place it near the near the near the stairs and then take the sack with me to, again. To, to be fair, to take it from someone who's worn like steel plate armor. Being like lightly encumbered, like fairly generous. Yeah. Fucking leather armor is a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's like waxed leather. It's no. <laughs> but Justin, like an old, old school leather jacket, like that's made of real leather. It's really heavy and gets like it starts to be annoying if you wear it for. My so character has can't take this thing off. So. That's true. Okay, so what are you guys doing now? Um, she will rinse, rinse and repeat on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, no first, problems. First, um, she will request uh, Ocarin's help to put the lid on again. That's fine. Yes. So yep. I'm well, going to okay. move you all into the other room. Just give me a moment. Uh, can I mark somewhere on the map where we left the plate armor? Uh, yeah, just draw like an X on it or something. Okay, somewhere here, I think. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see that. That's fine. It's it's in a dark for me though. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. It's that you should be able to see it now as I sort of move you across here. Yeah. Okay, lovely. So I'm moving you all into the room across the way. So, as you head across into this room, you can see that there are three sarcophaguses in here, and there are also two stone statues in here. That appear to depict some form of guards. They're they're sculpted to look like they're wearing armor. They're holding shields and swords. In fact, they both look very reminiscent of the the sort of statue of Austin the Errant. Although they're obviously different people. The the sarcophagi have a mix of different people on them now since you guys have mentioned that effectively you're just like 
rinsing and repeating moving through these various sarcophagi i'm obviously not going to go through in detail of like everyone who's down here or every last like bit and piece that is in their their sarcophagus what i'm going to ask you to do is each room you go into i'm going to just ask whoever's doing the heavy lifting to roll me a d6 that'll be how many turns you spent like levering lids off etc i'll give you a a silver piece total for like how much worth of stuff you've potentially got access to then we'll move you on to the next room just to save you having to like go through yeah. everything good call okay, okay so who's doing the heavy lifting i'm not i will wait oh, back, back there i would want to conserve my hp to be honest Okay. Someone else has to has to lift least the uh, has to uh, lose them too. So. Okay. So, Audrin, can you please roll me a d6 to see how many turns it takes for you to like lever these off and stuff. Okay. Oh so, shit. Four six. How how many turns did we um, waste for the other room? The other room, it was probably three or four. So we are ten now or nine. Yeah. Out of thirty, I have. Mhm. Mm That's. Oh wait a minute. No, you have more than that because you're using a Gloombug one. Oh no, it is thirty. You're right. Yeah. So I'm got twenty one left. I'm just writing it down. Okay. Okay. So. Let me just see how much stuff you managed to grab from here. Okay, from this tomb chamber, you are able to grab approximately 270 silver pieces worth of items. Should I write it down again? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Is the flail on the loose pile as well? Uh, you ha can look in the handouts, Lock Adventuring Company Plunder. And it should be in the um, bottom part of this thing. Yep. Okay, so you've spent six turns doing all of that, you know, putting the lids back on, gathering up the loot, etc. What's the plan now, guys? The plan mm. is uh, to go briefly back and dump the sacks with the loot, so we don't carry 290 silver pieces worth of stuff. And then we go back down the hallway. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So who's carrying the loot back? Who's going out and carrying the loot back to the stairs? Um, Will and Sasha, I guess, because he has yeah. a light. And... Yeah. Okay, as the two of you are getting ready to leave this chamber, you can just make out the sound of soft footfalls padding along the large corridor outside. And you can hear like this, this snuffling sound, this like... <laughs> Okay, uh, I draw my bow and will um, put my lantern um, in a corner of the room and call for Barden and Aldrin. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Sassy will draw her rapier. I, I presume you're... Did you leave already or are you still where I am? Because I'm going to... I, I would assume we are somewhere. Moment, I'm, I'm I'm just putting myself where well, I think we are. Since there's effectively something in the area, we'll do it in turns now. So, William, okay. William, you move yourself to where you want to be. Okay. Um. 
I think I would move here and see whatever this is. Okay. As you're, you move out into the corridor and you can shine your light down the the corridor this in this greenish glow you see what appears to be an extremely large dark brown furred rodent with sharp yellowed teeth and a sort of leprous unhealthy look to it as you your light sort of shines on it it makes this loud squeaking chittering noise and sort of rears up on its hind feet okay um i would just drop my lantern as uh, said, uh, as silently as I can and then try to shoot my bow. Is this possible in this run? Or? Yeah, that's fine. You've only, taken, you've only taken your movement. I'm not going to say it takes an action to put your lantern down. That's dead easy. Okay. So make your shot. Oh, my, my, I use my crossbow, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, that's plus five. 14 with one damage only, sadly. Okay, however, you have hit it. Your crossbow bolt shoots past it. It just grazes the side of the rat's neck. It lets out this sort of strange half snarl, half squeak that all of you inside the tomb chamber still can hear. Then we move on to Sasha. I momentarily forgot the actions you have in this game. Do you have... Um, yes, yes, you can move and then attack. Yeah. Okay, so there's no, uh, like, fate-type actions. Like, intercept and stuff, they don't have that. No, it's just you You can do a move and you basically say what you want to do. You can dodge, but... Hmm. Okay. That's an action, so you can't attack with that. Okay, so... It seems I have enough movement to go down and attack it. Is that correct? Each of the squares is five foot, so yes, I believe so. One, two, three, four. Should be. So she will attack it with her rapier drawn. Okay, its AC is 13. And I will find the die, and I'll roll the die. I'll roll. Ooh, max damage. Just not enough to hit. Okay, you swing at this unhealthy looking rat, and now that you're closer to it, Sasha, you can see that it's actually like missing patches of its fur, and although it's quite like massive, it almost looks like emaciated. And you I'm, guessing it, I'm guessing in the green glow of the gloom light, it looks even more scary. Indeed, and you can actually see there are several points on its skin where it appears to have similar green mushrooms to the ones glowing on the tomb. So, like, yeah. growing out of it, like, matted okay. into its fur. In her adrenaline, she, she charges forward and, and stabs it. Um, but when the light hits it and she gets a shock, she lets out a little scream, and that causes her to miss the big beast. Okay, however, don't forget you also have a Barden to move and take his action. Because there's no way he'd allow Miss Sasha to go out there on her own and face the danger without him. Yeah, I'll just... I can't seem to find him. It's all right. Yeah. Let me move. Let me move him up to you. I got him. There we go. Okay, button. Don't have an attack for him. Maybe, maybe we should um, move him somewhere so that Odrun can attack too. Well, feel free to move Barden where you want. I mean, Odrun could walk past Barden. Okay. Past so tactical. Uh, yeah, you, you will need you will need to put the the weapons into that you've given Barden into his character sheet. It's cool. I just roll a d20 and we will see if he hits or not. Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't. Ooh, so close. So he runs in with his short sword, presumably, and you you hear him shout, "Don't worry, I'll take care of it, Miss Sasha." And he lunges in. So, but as he does so, this rat just sort of that's scampering around in the corridor squeaks loudly at him, jumps out of his range. The sword whistles through the air harmlessly. We now come on to Odrun. Okay, so I can't see, but there's a whole lot of noise coming down from the corridor. Yeah, definitely, and you, like you say, you've just heard like Barden shout, "Don't worry, Miss Sasha, I'll take care of it." Mm -hmm. Oh shit, I've missed. <laughs> Fuck! 
Um, so yeah, I step into the corridor. Okay, so if I'm seeing this right, there's a single rat. It is yeah, a single there. rat, however, it is extremely large. Yeah. And it's got this unhealthy, diseased, leprous look to it. And you can actually see sort of in the light, the green light from William's lantern that it has patches of these like mushrooms almost growing out of its fur. And as it's right. snarling at Bard, and you can see there's like almost like foam flecking its lips and sort of dribbling onto the ground. Oh, that's not good. Uh Oh, I'm just seeing I rolled too high. I had the bonus I, I put in what was too high, sorry. It is fine, don't worry about it. These things happen. Yeah. Do we have a movement rate? I forget what it is. I can't find it on my sheet. It's 30. Yeah, it's 30. 30. Okay. So I'm, and each is 5, I presume. Yeah. 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 So I make it there. Just fine. And yeah. I get my fish head cudgel and attempt to just beat it back because I'm I'm quite afraid that it's going to give leprosy to <laughs> the kids. Oh, okay, make your attack roll. Most likely. A crit. <laughs> Splendid. Okay, so you have certainly done enough damage to kill this horrible beast. Would you like to describe how you finish it off? So Odoran approaches, gets his fish and cudgel in, and uh, I presume the the rat is sort of like doing this back and forth thing, trying to grab bites. And uh, so I'm, I'm sort of trying to put myself in between uh, the rat and Sasha and Barden. And when the rat comes in for a bite, I just I do a baseball move basically on its head and just slam it against the wall. Uh, and uh, yeah, just I, I bat it away from us. But it's big, so it doesn't really fly that far away. But <laughs> Okay, you, you slap it with your fish headed cudgel, so throwing it back about 10 feet, because like I say, it is fairly big, but it lands further down the corridor. As it hits, luckily because you batted it away from yourself, as it hits the ground, obviously it breaks these mushrooms that are enmeshed in its pelt. And for a few moments you see this like of smoke, but you know, given your knowledge of such things, given you're something of a mushroom connoisseur, you know that these are, <laughs> these are actually spores from the, the mushrooms that were growing, somehow growing on the creature. And you, you obviously, you guys all like wait for a few seconds for them to disperse. Okay, we're effectively out of rounds, guys. That was the only enemy here. Uh, <clears throat> mushrooms <throat> growing on live animals? That's, a, that's that little shocked looking at Ogren. This This seems like that temple we were in. Mm. <clears throat> Maybe it's a common thing. Maybe it wasn't alive? It, it looks mm. kind of mangly. Mangy? It's the word. Mm. Yeah, mm. mangy. I'm no expert, but could be. Well, whatever it is, it's destroyed. So. I'm looking we'll, for my crossbow bolt. We'll count our blessings. No, that's fine, William. You go and retrieve your crossbow bolt. Absolutely. That fine. was very brave of you, Barton. This is my setting. He, he sort of like stands up a little bit straighter and he, he turns around to you and favours you with a, a a dazzling smile and he says, oh, oh well, well, it, it was, and he looks a bit embarrassed and he's like, oh, it was, a, it, it was nothing, Miss Sasha, but uh, well, 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 I couldn't very well let you go running off and facing whatever that thing was on your own, could I? Oh, but remember, some enemies... Um are very dangerous, and that's why we have a, a big brute like Ogren with his mighty cudgel. He, he grins when you say that. Maybe we should check the halls for enemies regularly. 
Yeah. So you'll go up here and dump the loot. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to assume you dump it in the same spot as the chain mail. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. To make it very accessible to anyone who want to come down and loot our loot. It doesn't seem like someone was down here. At least not between the first time I got in there and now. Indeed, well, the, the only the any signs of sort of some people being here previously, William, that you can see are ones that you know that you've made. I checked specifically for that, so. Mm -hmm. But this is um, is probably coming from further down. I mean, we did <clears throat> you we did make a lot of noise. It, you you said that it's pretty old in here. Is there um, uh, um, um, a sheet of dust everywhere? There is quite a lot of dust. Yeah. Could we follow the steps from these in from this beast to their origin? To the steps in the dust? Yeah, you most certainly could. I will draw on the map for you where the trail leads. Just give me a moment. If if you stand here and look at the. The remains of the rat beast. Does it appear to be bleeding? It it, it does appear to be bleeding from the the wounds it sustained. Yeah. <laughs> so it clearly was alive in some manner. So is it bleeding like blood, or is it sap? It, it seems to be blood. Okay. Uh, Audra feels visibly more comfortable now. Okay, so hopefully you see the grey arrow I've drawn on there. Yeah. That is where yeah. the, the trail of sort of footprints in the dust from this rodent leads. Hmm. Do you want I've... to go see if there's more, or do you want to... And I, I nod towards the the next chamber. Let's, let's check for these things, I would yeah. say. I would hand pardon my lantern and um, re-bind my crossbow. Okay, that's fine. Just give me a moment and I'll move the lantern onto Barden. Oh, we can't see anything anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Only for a moment as I move it across. There you go. You should hopefully be able to see now yes good yep but uh, well, just in case what does the leather the elven leather armor give an ac uh, it's just a standard suit of leather armor i think it's 12 or something i'm checking 12 is what we begin with right yeah that's 14 14 okay Mm -hmm. I'll just make a note of that, John. Is that okay? That's absolutely... Well, you you can just change Barden's AC on his character if you wish. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. I can see that's changed. Okay. So you've spotted the footprints, William. You've passed your lantern over to Barden, who seems quite pleased that he's been given like a position of responsibility as the sort of light bearer of the group, effectively. I just wanted my hands free. Well, well, yeah, but he he doesn't know that. <laughs> so he, he 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 does know he does know the union bylaws, and by having light responsibility, increases his wage. Mm, light light responsibility. Yeah, I think any bonus game will get is eclipsed by the hazard pay. Like this isn't good. <laughs> Okay, um, let's move slowly towards this entrance and let's take a peek. Okay, so can you all move yourselves? Obviously, uh, Sasha, you might want to move Barden because he's got the light. I think you have to move in one square further or we see nothing. Okay, so you can now see his light shining into the two chambers that you're nearby. You know, William, that the chamber here is the one that had the sort of tunnels coming in from the, the natural caverns. Ah, yeah, I remember. 
and you can just see the sort of start of the of these natural caverns here we, where they've sort of we, broken we, we can't see really the light in in there at least i can't ah i think i have to just move a bit up here okay okay um can i see still see the trail of this red inside there you can indeed and i will draw where the trail goes for you from this point the trail continues through here okay i would move slowly inside there and take a look around and um hand um wave pardon behind me okay that's absolutely fine so all move yourselves to where you want to be as you're sort of looking into this room you can see the, the, the there were two sarcophaguses in here but they've been broken open there's also a statue in here as you're entering this room you can hear what sounds like something scrabbling around in the sarcophagus here Something rattling inside there. Yeah? You can hear like this noise, like something scurrying around in there. In this it's... room? Indeed, yeah. Okay. So the. Um... It's, is it still closed, mostly, or...? It, it's still got the lid on top, but there is like a hole, like, like the lid's cracked, and there is a hole that would allow access to it, but because the two halves of the lid are sort of still on it, you can't really, unless you're like peered in, you can't really see inside it. Doesn't sound like the best idea ever. Mm. I just pointed it and shrug. This one? Uh, the no, the one. other one. The one in the corner of the room. You could just shoot through the box, I guess. Mm. It's just as we, we don't, can't see inside, so it will just a wasted shot. The shot will travel through the wood. We, if it's something super small in there, then. It, it doesn't sound like it's something very small. Okay. Okay. Just pull it apart and we shoot at it, whatever it is. Okay, so all move yourselves to where you want to be, like, when the lid's, like, pulled apart. Yeah. And um, the first shot is not in melee, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even if you guys are all sort of stood adjacent to it, you won't count as being in melee unless whatever it might be in this sarcophagus comes out and engages you. Because at the minute you're just firing into this sarcophagus. I can't aim at this position, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Then I will okay. just point my crossbow at it. Well, if you two get ready, I'll lift. I'll I'll break it apart, and uh, you can smash it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so, Sasha, you heave one of the stone pieces of lid off, and as you do, you can see a large rat inside the sarcophagus, and as you pull it out, and your, your torchlight floods in, it goes... Drop the stone on it! <laughs> <laughs> you can certainly do that if you wish. <laughs> if 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 it, if it comes up, she'll probably in a, in a surprise just go back and well, and uh, drop uh, the stone. Uh, although uh, at the minute, although it's not actually sort of surprised, surprised as in terms of the rules, it's not sort of reacting by immediately leaping out because you've just like shone a blinding light in there. It's just like <laughs> best make myself look big and scary because there's obviously something going down. Yeah, well, she'll she'll just dump the lid and and go back a little. Not enough to move into another square, just uh, get away from the... Are, are you trying to hit it with the lid or are you just like dropping the lid and like, backing off? Um, she's not intentionally trying to hit it with the lid. Okay, that's fine. So you, you drop your fragment of the lid on the floor and take like half a step backwards. Okay, we're going to go on to sort of like the, the round-based actions now. So, William. Oh yeah, I'll take a free action and, and scream, kill it, kill it, kill it. 
Okay. And I got a plus two bonus because of the crossbow and try to hit it. 16. Yes, that most definitely hits. Roll your damage. Oh, damage two damage. Too. Splendid. Okay, you've severely wounded it, but not enough to kill it yet. So describe how you shoot this vile rodent. Yeah, it's 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 a thing is screeching and it's standing up for it. So I'm just taking my shot at the body of this thing and maybe pierce somewhere um, on the sides and it burrows itself and it the pelt of this creature. Indeed, and that is what happens. So next we go on to Sasha. Mm, well, if she composes herself, she'll stab it with the rapier. Okay, that is absolutely fine. Make your attack roll. No, she hasn't composed herself, so she'll stab into some of the coffin bits and it, not connect with it. Indeed, you attempt to stab it, but you're obviously still shaken up by the the, the appearance of this loathsome rodent. And like you say, you just sort of like stab into some of the, the coffin fragments. The, the rat sort of like continues hissing. It's tensing itself, obviously getting ready to leap out of the sarcophagus. But it's not had a chance to do so yet. And it may not have a chance to do so because, like, mighty Odrun is stepping up to the plate. Ha <laughs> ha! Watch me fail. <laughs> you um, killed the last one. Yeah, I'm the anchor. So, is it covered in fungus as well? It is indeed. Fuck. <laughs> um, I'm... <clears throat> I guess we've talked about the form. I use my cudgel as a walking stick half mm -hmm. the time. So it's sort of like um, sharp at the other end. So I, I, I try to use it as a like a small, very small spear and just try to skewer it. Excellent, mate. Your roll. <clears throat> that, that'll do it. D describe how a second rat meets its doom. <laughs> <clears throat> so what happens is uh, I skewer it it turns into shish kebab and uh, I fling it to the other side of the room because I'm very aware that this force is just going to go okay uh, they, uh... and that's what happens you skewer <laughs> it and sort of flick it off the end of your cudgel to the far end of the room it wetly impacts with the stone wall and again there's this <sighs> of spores and its body just sort of slides down the wall onto the floor and a few moments later the spores disperse however as that's going on william you hear a scrabbling in the darkness nearby you and into the edge of the torchlight another of these large rats runs drawn by the noise and with a a squeaking snarl it hurls itself through the air towards you you see these sharp yellow incisors gaping open to try and bite into your soft flesh so i will make the rats attack roll uh, um armor class should be 16 i think i've got leather armor and i've got 16 uh, 17 dexterity I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, 14 plus 2. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be 16. Okay. Yeah. So let me roll its attack. Okay, it launches itself at you. However, all its incisors do is like graze your leather armor. It causes you no damage whatsoever. And it drops down into the darkness. You can still just about see it sort of skittering around near you. But there's only a very narrow column of light from the lamp that Barden's holding. So it's quite difficult for you to see here. And in fact, after attacking you, the rat slinks back into the darkness. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's your turn, William. Um, since I can't see it anymore, I would try to leap over the sarcophagus. Well, well don't, don't forget that since you, Sasha, and Audrin are all effectively going simultaneously, if you wished, we could move Sasha and Barden 
up to the top so then you'd be able to like get Barden over to like shine a light down and then do yeah but uh, but i don't think i want to engage the thing in melee i just want to back down and draw my bow that is absolutely fine no problems at all okay so you back down and you draw your bow and we now come to sasha okay well she'll go in here and the light boy will go in here can i see it we, we, we can't ready an action right no no Okay. Can I move into the dark even though I can't see anything? Is that possible? Yeah, you, you can certainly move into the dark, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if she can't see it, see my trip, how, how do we do that? Because I can see its hit points, so I kind of know where it is. Indeed. Well, since this is important, I'm going to check this just to make sure I'm getting it right. Yeah, well, you check that. I checked up increments, and if you're unencumbered, you have 40 feet of movement in combat. Okay. If you're light encumbered, you have 30. If you're heavy encumbered, you have 20. Also, I'm fairly sure I still have light. I'm not sure, though. Uh, Sasha has light because of all the guns mm. she's carrying on. No, I don't have. She has two pieces, so two points. Of increments. Yeah, me too. Okay, what, what I'm going to... I can't find anything specifically that says about um, darkness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat sort of attacking something in darkness. So you have to go into sort of like the vague area where you think they are. And I'm going to treat it like if you're attacking into a melee, but one of the people will be like the darkness so basically if you're attacking like a rat in the darkness just one enemy you'll have like a 50 percent chance of just like swinging around in the darkness before you even make your attack roll i found the thing oh you found for it darkness oh sweet yeah. go for it so uh characters fighting opponents that they cannot see suffer a minus six penalty to hit in melee and all attacks against them by the unseen party are considered to be from behind Okay, splendid, so there we go. What does that mean? Considered to be from behind. If I'm attacked, or what? Okay, so I'll go in here, and my light boy will follow here, I guess. Okay, can Ogren pass him if he's standing here? Yeah. I'm not sure if that's a wall or not. Okay, so I'll leave him there. So minus six. Okay, this is a wall. Yeah. Let me just have a look. On a second. Um, is this a is this a wall? Yes, that's a wall. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you're asking about being attacked from behind, Dennis. That you know, if you're attacked from behind, the person attacking has plus two. Okay. But I have minus six. Yes. Well, you would do, but now you brought Barden up, you can actually see it. So. Oh, okay. I'll delete that then and roll. Doesn't matter. Okay. Unfortunately, perhaps still haunted by the memories of your previous experience, yeah. you you swing wild and do not hit this thing. Odrin, rodent killer. The slayer of the rat. The fur bane. Um. Fur bane. <laughs> um, hmm... I'm. Uh, can I actually, before I move, uh, can I squeeze like through here? Yeah, yes, you can squeeze through there. It's very narrow though, and if you're attacked while you're in there, mm, yeah, that's, you, that's... your your opponent will get a, a bonus because you're having to like squeeze yourself through this tiny gap. Yeah, and I presume I can pass bars and yes, of course. if I want to go this way, yeah. So I do that. So I go there. So that's two squares. And uh, Sasha is fighting. Can I still pass by her? Or... Yeah, you, you can still pass by her. Obviously, if you were to like shoot into this combat, it'd be rather yeah, nice. That's... But I'm assuming you're going like old school melee. Yeah, you were going like Facebook style. Uh, so one, two. I presume like three, four, five gets me there. Yep. 
And is that a rat I see? It is indeed. You can see it's just on the very edge of the torchlight. Mm -hmm. It's tensing as though getting ready to leap. You can, as you sort of head in, you see Sasha take a stab at it, but she misses. Yeah. So we go in for the for the old clobbering time on Zirat. Okay, you have hit it and you have severely wounded it. However, it is not quite dead. Right, so it's like tensing up to like jump forward, and uh, I think I, I crush one of its feet. <laughs> okay, well, what I'm going to do for its turn is since you're like you're getting in close to like crush it, I'm going to say that it's going to sort of snap its head round and attempt to bite mm -hmm. you while you are doing that. So I'll make it's a tower. What's your AC, Odrin? Seventeen, unless there's a special stuff going on okay it snaps its head round and its incisors close about a millimeter away from <laughs> your skin just you just feel it graze the top of your skin but it doesn't actually break through your flesh okay william uh, hmm yeah, whatever. I'm just running towards the thing, trying. Can I can I move? Um, I can move. Yeah, man. One, two, three, four, can move here. Should yeah. be working. That's fine. And try to attack it with my rapier. So I put away my bow again and throw my rapier and attack it. Okay, it's AC is 13. Yeah. Not my best attack, but whatever. I've got no bonus, right? There's no bonus. 12. Not enough, I think. Okay, you stab at it, but it leaps backwards nimbly out of range of your attack. Okay, we move on to Sasha and Barden. Um, yeah, you'll go in here. And keep the light high so we can see, and Sasha will stab it again. Ooh, and she connects. So okay. She skewers the little rat in his neck. Indeed you do. Killing Let's throw it away. You kill the beast. I'm gonna, <laughs> can all of you please make me poison saves? Nah. I don't want to skew it in anyway. I regret <laughs> that. Uh, uh, it's, it's too late for regrets, I'm afraid. Poison saves each of you. Well, apart from Barden. I fail. Okay. <laughs> fail. Okay, William and... Uh, who else was it who failed? Sasha. Uh, Sasha, you take an, you take three hit points of damage as you skewer this thing. There's a and the area your yourselves and Odrin are in fills with these spores, and you're both sort of left like coughing and spluttering for a few minutes. Yeah, I'm not looking that tough anymore. Yes, yeah, he's coughing and but taking off the the. <clears throat> The mask in front of her, coughing up blood, spitting it out. <laughs> okay, luckily for you, Aldrin, the the gods seem to have smiled on you, and you, did, despite sort of standing in the middle of this cloud, you seem unaffected. Ah, Dagon! <laughs> it's because Sasha uh, said she didn't believe in the gods. That's her punishment. And uh, um, I, I kick the rat's corpse away, because I'm... I'm doing fine, so I I try to get it away from everyone else. Yeah, I'm I'm throwing up again, and I'm not looking too hard. You kick you kick the rat's corpse, Odrin, and it sort of slides across the floor in this direction into the darkness. You hear a soft, as presumably it hits a wall or something similar. Mm -hmm. Says so we'll get out her water skin and it kind of wrench her. Her mouth and spit out yeah. some of the stuff and Me too. Ha hand it to William. And yeah, as he's drinking you. some of the water, she will take one of the 
Eldritch Rubat high out. Okay. Can I like break it in half and give him one half and myself one half and then we just divide the healing? Yeah, that's fine. What? 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 Basically, he's he's got a an Aldwich rhubarb tart that was given to him by Salazar, and oh. it, it restores hit points. So what he's propo what she's proposing to do is break it in half, give you half, eat half herself, and basically just half the healing. Which I, I'm absolutely fine with. That makes perfect sense to me. It's a tart, of course, you can break it in half. You want to roll the die? It's one d six plus two. Well, uh, Johannes. Sure. Um. Yeah. Nice. Okay. You each you each took into your oh. half of an Aldwich rhubarb tart, and as you're eating this tart, despite the fact that it's obviously cold, it's not it's not warm and at its best, it feels hearty. It ta it tastes clean and pure. And as you're eating it, you do start feeling a lot better. Your coughing starts to fade away. And you, you feel revitalized. The sort of tanginess of the of the rhubarb seems to act as some sort of curative. Wow, these are good. Suddenly Amazing. got more color in my head. Yeah, <clears throat> I must admit I was a little skeptic that they would work, but yeah. See. How many of these do you got? Well, we only got one now. Hmm. Uh. I suppose we could ask him to make more. I mean, we did save his daughter's life. He should. So, let's look around if there are more of these beasts. Yeah, Barton, come in here with the light. Okay, we're effectively not in combat rounds now, so obviously you can move yourselves. Barton steps into this natural cavern. As he's moving in with his torch, Obviously, moving through the corridor, Odrin, given that you're nearest to the corridor, apart from Barden, who's carrying the light, you can see mm -hmm. that where the the natural cavern connects to the the actual stonework of the burial catacombs, it looks as though the there were there were cracks naturally formed in the the sort of stone walls, like here mm -hmm. and here. And it looks to you from marks in the sort of dirt as though the rats have used that to sort of like dig and tunnel their way into the catacombs. Mm -hmm. Okay, in this chamber, you can see what appears to be a, another broken sarcophagus, perhaps the missing third one from the stone chamber you were just in. It's broken open and empty as far as you can see there is no lid on it i'm looking confused at this last sarcophagus uh did the rats pull it out here <laughs> no <laughs> no but who else did it well not the rats Mm, so that could be someone else here. Yes, yeah, someone with... Mm, someone who can move these sarcophagus is around... This is not a pleasant thought. Maybe no. we can try to block the exit and move on. If, if we take a look at the, the sarcophagus in this room, John, does it have any like scratch marks or tool marks that it has been that has been damaging when it was moved? It, it doesn't have tool marks as such. However, as you look at the the sarcophagus and you examine it more closely, you can see that there are what appear to be marks that have been sort of like, almost like something's clawed at the stone something with like sharp claws or like talons but as you sort of like you examine them you can see they appear to be in a pattern more reminiscent of like a more humanoid hand than the sort of rodent paws 
unfortunately there's not a thick layer of dust in these natural caves due to it being mainly rock natural rock and soil so the you can't really see any further on the trail of where the rodents have gone or come from okay well it does seem like that's really powerful claw marks here sasha says and punch to one of the claw marks <clears throat> if these rats are like <clears throat> normal rats they would have a whole colony right and she looks at Ogren well there would be more than three yeah at any rate so I don't suppose you could like summon a lot of water and just drown them all Mm, I guess we could, and um, he looks up, I guess we could open the ground for the rain to come in. Take a while though. Yeah, and we have to dig through all the... You do know that the one advantage you might have if you were to go with that is that, as I said earlier, there's already sort of dampness Sort of seeping into this area from the soil above so effectively there's there's water already getting through into this area i'm not saying it'd make it very easy but it would make it easier if you chose to take that route and i think you know that Audrin, so i don't mind telling you that but three hours mm -hmm. later uh, three weeks later <laughs> and the, the dungeon is now slightly more damped hmm. Audrey just stood there going, well, I'd like to see someone fire a flintlock pistol at me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck your guns. Well, um, sort of, te technically uh, speaking, you could make a protection scroll against these rats as a cleric. But it would be costly. I have no idea how to make um, that. That's, that that's on easy. page uh, 76. You can, as a cleric, you can make protection scrolls. So okay. um, you basically have to sacrifice corpses of whatever you want to protect against. And okay. then you can you make... How, huh? how long time does it take? Uh, it doesn't specify, only does it take... Um, it's, it costs 50 silver points, um, silver pieces per day in offerings to the cleric's deity. Okay, so looking at this, the total hit dice value of the creatures sacrificed determines the length of time it's going to take to craft it, as well as the chance that it will be successful. So the more bodies you sacrifice, the more likely you are to be successful, but the longer it takes. So the way this works is for each five hit dice of creatures you sacrifice, you have to spend one day preparing the scroll, while the, oh, to okay. the total number of creature hit dice is the percentage chance that it will successfully create a working action scroll. Okay, so we got about three hit dice worth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yes. Uh, let's not do that. <laughs> I think it's only worth it if you literally want to fight a war against these things. Well, th th there is a reason why like clerics aren't like bobbing around everywhere, like making scrolls against for protection against bats and cockroaches. I, I, and I just I just remembered it, but I didn't know that it is that ineffective. It's just one percent per hit dice is, is a little low, I think. That's super low. Holy shit, is this low? So you have to kill like a colony of these things first before you can use this thing. Mm. But at this okay. point, they are not no danger anymore. No. This area we're in now, John. Yes. You said but, this was but, like a natural cave? That's correct, but, yeah. But we got a protection scroll against these uh, elven things we looted from the elven towns. Yeah, he has a, protect, a protection scroll against plant monsters, yeah. Hmm. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> I suggest... Just an idea. I, my character obviously doesn't know this. Yeah. I suggest we go back and uh, leave the colony of. Uh, I could um, lay some um, small rats for later and uh, finish with our 
investigation of the tomb. I yeah, could lay out coffee. some call traps at the entrance, so at least we can hear them screaming when they walk through it. Yeah. They have actually made sounds. Yeah, but um, hearing them earlier is maybe good, and maybe they already a little, little bit damaged when they walk through it. Yeah, I, I would just, because I can't remember if we outlined whether or not they actually made sounds, like noises. Yeah, yeah they did. did. That's yeah. why we okay. heard them. Good. But, but if, uh, if they yeah. scream, they will make more sound, I guess. Uh, let's move back to the corridor and I just place some call traps at the entrance to this cavern. Okay, all, all move yourselves to where you want to be. I would... Since I can't see anything, I want to be somewhere here. Not sure exactly. Okay. Hey, I'm pretty good. Uh, I draw some call traps. Yep. Uh, they have where Audrin is standing currently. So there's a bag of call drops there. Lovely. Let's keep going through these caverns. Yeah, let's take this one. How long does this, did this take altogether? It has taken five it, turns or something. It's taking you about six turns. Okay, so we have fifteen left. If you take this room, John, where I move Barton to. Okay. Can so we do it the same way? Just roll a d6? Yeah, that's fine. Roll me a d6. Roll low, roll low. Yeah. Nice. Let's get low. Okay, so in this chamber, as you search through it, you find what appears to be ninety silver pieces worth of assorted grave goods. You also find what appears to be a pair of uh, silver earrings in the shape of fish. You think they're probably worth about ten silver pieces because they're quite small. Do you write it in, Dennis, yes. or should I? Okay. Did, did you say silver pieces or gold piece? Silver. Mm. Is that for the pair or each? That's for the pair. Like I said, they're very small. The best thing we found yet is the gold ring. Do you want these, Hawkon, to go with your fish motif? Sorry, what were they? Small fish? What? Small silver fish earrings. Oh, for sure, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll give them to Akron. Okay, no problem. You have a pair of small silver fish earrings that are worth 10 silver pieces for the pair. Notice, John, how she slowly is turning him to Fabio. Yeah, I, I had I had noticed how you were sort of accessorizing <laughs> Akron as you were going through the, the dungeon. You, I already gave him like four... Or five uh, yeah, the necklaces. Yeah. Necklaces. So, I'm turning him into Mr. T. You gave me seven. I gave one away. <laughs> okay. He, he went. He went into the. He went into this dungeon worshiping Dagon, and he came out worshiping the cult of Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rainbow already gone behind him. That's it. <laughs> his wind. You, wind in his hair. You become out of the oh, dungeon, no. and you be like, Audrey, are you wearing glitter in your hair? <laughs> Maybe he's born with it. And shiny shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's go to the next room. <laughs> okay, I think we need to go up. I don't think we took. Yeah, I think we left some. Let's go to the yeah. hallway. I think we left these two. Yes. Let's start with the this one. Yeah. Okay. On the right side. Is can't you move to walls in roll twenty? No. Probably not. Uh, just give me a moment. I'll put you all in the room. There we go. Okay. So whoever's doing the heavy lifting, roll me a d six. Okay. Uh, 
You wanna take this, Hogren? Yeah, I, I could sure. do it. I could. Okay, hold on. Okay, so it's gonna take you two turns in there. We're getting more uh, experience with this. We mm -hmm. Twelve turns left. Okay. Okay, you find a hundred and twenty silver pieces worth of assorted grave goods. You also find sort of tucked under the body of one of the people in here. And as our resident magic user, I'm going to ask Dennis to name this person. They are they are clad in what appear to be the mouldering remnants of robes. And underneath them, instead of a weapon, as with most of the other bodies, you find what appears to be a leather, a sealed leather case. It's been sealed with wax, like the sort you might carry a parchment in. Cool. Hang on. I'm gonna call him Espion the Vicious. Espion the Vigorous. Okay, you find this scroll case that, like I say, it's a leather case with like a lid on it, and the lid has been sealed around with wax. And it's been placed under the body where weapons were with all of the other ones so far. Okay. She's not gonna unseal it. You're not going to unseal it? No, I'm not gonna unseal it. Okay, so make a note that you have a sealed scroll case. Yes. And I'll move the little dude. Okay. William, do you want to roll us the D6 for this room? Sure. Mm. I won again. You guys are getting to be sort of tomb raiding pros now. So. Yeah. Still yeah. Go in, pop we know the lid, how to do it, Low. Pop the lid, take the armor with all the bones, shake it, take all the gold. Go. Indeed. Okay, you find 210 silver pieces. Also, in one of the sarcophaguses, you find what appears to be a great axe. Hmm. Sounds like something Odrin would maybe use. It's, in, again, rather like the flail. It's in quite bad condition. But oh, it, it could potentially be repaired. Do you got it, Dennis? Do you want it? I managed to write it down. I know I don't want it. I don't use yeah, really just, use melee weapons. Get it on the list. Okay, I have it on the list. Where do you write it on the list? Just ruin great wax. No, I just have a notepad, and then I'll I'll edit the. Ah, you edit it later. Okay. I don't want to shift tabs all the time. Okay, when we collect all this, John? Yep. Sasha and uh, Barton is gonna go up and disperse. Disperse? Oh my god. Disperse. Put, put down our loot with the <laughs> other loot. <laughs> English words are sometimes hard. We got a red. Okay, indeed, as you're withdrawing. Actually, but before I go into what the, the rat's doing, Audrin, wh where were you during this? Because your sort of token's been left in the the previous chamber. He's uh, heeding the call of nature. He's away from Cuba. Right, okay, no problem. I'm going to put him next to William, because I'm assuming he would be like keeping up with you guys and helping out, rather than just sort of sitting on his own like in, in an old sort of mouldering tomb. In, in the dark. Did this red move through my call traps? 
because last time we the enemies did receive damage doing that. You've not heard any sort of squeaks or sounds of your cold drops being disturbed. You might assume that maybe it's come from further down the corridor rather than from that branch. Mm. Who knows? Okay. Um, so, William, same. it's you first. I would move as far away as I can, maybe here, and shoot with my crossbow. Never done this a day. Uh, plus two bonus and eighteen for three damage. Okay, so you have most definitely hit it and you have severely injured the creature. You see your bolt sink into it. However, it is still moving. Who wants to go next? Sasha or Audra? No. Want to increase your kill count, Audra? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hit them, you kill them. It's a good combo, I think. Yeah. Do you want to go, Sasha, or...? No, it's cool. You go. Okay. Close it. Yep. With a mighty bellow, Audrin goes in and takes a swing at the rat and... Home run. <laughs> Des describe <laughs> that thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he uh, <laughs> he goes. I am done with these rats, and <laughs> he goes uh, to uh, basically meet the rat head on. Runs there and smacks it, and it just disappears somewhere in the darkness. You hear a soft <laughs> as it like hits the floor some distance into the darkness. <laughs> Then I a think poof, I, when the spores uh, disperse. I, I think we found uh, Ogren's uh, speciality here. He's yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, humans? No, rats. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should just cut off one ear of each rat you kill and then you can build a nice ne another necklace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll do that next time when we come back here. Okay, so it's Sasha going now. What do you want to do, Sasha? Well, hearing the commotion, she's going to run down here to Ogren. And her little minion is going to follow. Okay. And unless she sees something, it doesn't appear. She will just... You think there are more? Look at Ogren. Waving you, her rapier. You don't see anything else, so we'll move on to William. Uh, I reload my crossbow. Okay. You do so, Audrin. I presume I can see what I can see. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. You could you could also wait um, and retreat, and I can shoot it with my crossbow first, so you can finish it again afterwards. Mm. I, I've got a plus five to hit with this thing, so. Yeah, but that's demon tactics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Lurking in the the dim light, the very the very very edge of the emerald green light cast by the Gloombugger lantern that Barden is holding, you can see another one of these rats. However, it doesn't actually appear to be like running towards you guys as it reaches the corpse of the other rat that you kicked down the corridor, <laughs> Audrin. It actually stops and it starts eating the corpse of the other rat. Oh, I uh, I like. Oh, uh, Sasha, Sasha goes. Ew! <laughs> yeah. Turn her head a little. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm prodding Sasha. Like, look, look at the. There's another rat there, and it's eating the other one. Like, what do you make of this? <laughs> and the other rat explodes again. <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing seeing that side, John, she's gonna feel her stomach turning and. Uh... So she's going to feel queasy and take... I'm, I'm actually... I'm going to like motion for William to come forth. Okay. And I, I point the rat out. Like, there's, there's another rat there. It's eating the last one I killed. Uh, since it is um, yeah, occupied, it's, it's I, would go, uh... I would take another turn aiming. 
Is it considered attack from behind? <laughs> it, it's not considered attack from behind. However, you, you can take your time to aim. So it's obviously it's going to take it longer than like a turn to like devour this other massive rat. And it seems okay. to be more intent on that than you guys at the minute, because you're, so, you're okay. moving, you're not an easy kill. Aiming was plus two again, <laughs> right? That's correct. So I'm at plus four, then I'm plus seven total. Okay. Four damage. So you have hit it and you have killed it. Please narrate how you you take it down. I just hit it in the head where while it is um, um, eating one of the bigger parts of meat and while it's still in its mouth, I would just pierce through its throat and it would um, suffocate from the meat and die and explode. Probably indeed, it it sort of it's just torn off a particularly large chunk of the thigh of the other rat, and it's busy like gobbling down the the meat as your crossbow bolt hits its throat. It makes like this strangulated, high pitched squeaking sound that echoes unpleasantly through the corridor. Then there's sort of like a choking like. <coughs> It falls down to the ground, and again, there's this of these spores, but they disperse harmlessly since none of you are near enough to be affected. Yeah, I would try to retrieve my crossbow bolt pretty uncere unceremoniously. That's absolutely fine, you can quite easily do that. Cut them out and then just pull it out and wipe away the blood and the spores and mm -hmm. put them again in my quiver. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Can we still hear more of these? You can hear a few sort of like distant echoes, but you can't hear anything close by to you. Mm. We should maybe get more call traps. Or should we just retrieve for now and come back later? Yeah. Which for now sounds good, as it says, doing a little queasy. Mm -hmm. The big question is should we really take out all our loot here? Because it's obviously a family grave and. Just saying. How long do you think you've been, been here? We have been in here. If the, if the fight didn't take too long, 20 turns, and turn is 10 minutes, 200, it's like 3 hours, 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's going to be early afternoon above? Yep. Is that a particular busy time, John? Well, uh, early afternoon would be a fairly busy time because obviously with Port Crow being largely a fishing town, the, the fishermen go out in the morning to catch the fish. They come back sort of late morning, early afternoon. Then with their catches, then the actual selling of them and like the business would be taking place sort of like late afternoon, etc. So it, it would be fairly busy. The thing is, um, this entrance leads to the uh, chamber of the priest, right? Yes. No, no, it leads into the, the main chamber of the church. I thought it was the chamber of the priest and behind some curtain and stuff. Okay. But we could try to store it somewhere in a church because the, current, the, the priest is dead currently, so... Indeed, and you know from your conversation with Lord Draco Harper that although they'd sent word to the, the head of the church for a new priest to, to come to Porthcrawl, with everything that's going on with the Civil War, they're not sure when or if they'll get a new priest. So at the moment, the church is pretty much not being used. Maybe you should just store it in a church then. Sure. Okay. Let's she do will, that. Yeah. They will go up here. She'll take out the gold ring and put it in her pocket and also take the gold case and put it in her backpack. Okay. And the rest she will uh, carry up the stairs into the church. Okay, no problems. So let me add your tokens onto the church map. We have a church map? Yep. 
Just a moment, I'll be right back. <laughs> I already did that. <laughs> I'm hoping you should all be able to see that. I see a black dot. Alright, that's extremely odd. Give me a moment. Tell you once I see something. Uh, I don't see anything. Well, black dot. No, okay. no, no, it's now I see everything. Splendid. I think I saw this map somewhere. <laughs> On some website. <laughs> okay, so the trapdoor is there where I'm indicating now the sort of flagstone that goes down. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this is the, the main body of the church. It's obviously not abandoned as it looks in this map, right? That's, cor that's correct, yeah. I'm just choosing it because it's the basic shape I want for this sort of church. You can see the altar here where they would normally use for services, and you know that the priests chamber is sort of down here okay yeah let's just drag the stuff over there and I will scout it first to see if there's someone in the church currently praying or something okay you have a quick look around it appears to be fairly deserted at the moment you would know from, because you obviously you've spoke to a lot of people about various things we've been moving around Port Crawl, you know that at the moment, as a mark of respect, because no one would consider holding a service if they weren't a priest, because they'd be impersonating a priest, and obviously that's, that's blasphemous, so you wouldn't want to do that, but those of them who want to remember the, the old priest, uh, Father Young, they, they tend to gather outside the church, in the sort of like the garden areas near the tree where he was buried, no, no one's really sort of entering the church while they're waiting for a new priest. Just wave the others to me yeah. and we try to move as silently as we possibly can, not trying to move the metal stuff too much around so that we are not recognized and someone tries to take a look in. That is absolutely fine. So you guys, you're not in combat rounds, so feel free to, to move yourself where you want to be. So let's move here. I assume it's closed, not like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll move the the rest of the guys over. Just give me a moment. Is there a chest or something in there where we could store the stuff? Okay, as you're looking in the the priest's quarters here, there's there's all sort of stuff you'd expect to see in. Uh, quarters there is a, a clothes chest that would have once been used to have the priest's vestments his robes etc in there is a writing desk there's a, a small bookcase where he would he would have kept his holy books although you can't see any on there at the moment maybe they've been sort of like packed up ready to like hand over to his his successor you're not sure but you can basically see a chest a a bookcase and uh, a writing desk. Mm, I pointed a chest. Should work for now. No, I mean, yeah. You could just well. put it in there and um, lay the vests on, on top and it shouldn't raise any suspicion. Suppose not. Is this a window, John? Yeah. Does that lead out to the village? It, it would lead out to the village, yeah, but it, it's not a window that opens. It's like a stained glass window. Ah, uh, okay. We have to store it somewhere and we can't 
walk around in town with uh, massive plate armor and stuff. No. So we have to store it somewhere. I wish we could sell the plate armor right away because it's worth 1000 silver, but... Mm. Indeed, you know for yourself that since the obviously the invention of firearms, actual like full plate armor is like rare as that's part of the reason it's so valuable, just because like no one really makes it anymore. Mm. Also, I I would never use this thing because two two parts of encumbrance is just stupidly high. Okay, so what's the plan then, guys? Mm. I guess the plan is to leave the goods and go back. Yeah, I think we should get maybe some more call drops, because I feel like if there are more of these reds, they could be useful. I just had one back. And you said you were storing the goods in the chest? Is that yeah. So I'm just going to make a note on the map. How far away is the elf's house from here? That's a good question. Just give me a moment and I will actually be able to tell you. Okay, Marku's house is a hundred and fifty feet away from the church, give or take. Maybe in the night? Yeah. Yeah. We'll we could use our... We, we, have a, we have a cart. We could just try to move by and load it on there. Just like it would be no, no big deal and then move away. Yeah. yeah so so yeah. you're suggesting that basically what you're going to do is in the middle of the night sort of park your cart next to the church effectively, dump all your stuff in the back of the cart from the church, cover it over with something or whatever, then drive it to Marku's house and offload it there, is that? Yeah, and if someone asks a question, we just say, the Lord just ordered us to, ordered us to do this thing, which is technically correct. Oh, yeah, okay. So, is that is that the plan, guys? Are you guys going to wait for the evening and then do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, since um, the, there's not a lot that goes on in the evening, like like a lot of sort of these places there's not a lot that goes on in late evenings most people have retreated to the I, the inn or yeah. their own homes so i would buy like five bag of cord drops or something that's fine you can easily do that you've got plenty you've got plenty of time before the evening so just feel free to yeah. did it with the money and your carriage sheet so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm going to ask one of you just to, on the off chance you do encounter someone while you're moving your goods can one of you i don't mind who it is roll me a d6 and if you get a one you have encountered somebody it's so like i say it's fairly rare that there's many people about in the evening i think william should roll it just on the off chance that we meet his twin <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> why not a d6 yep nope Okay, the streets, uh, the dirt streets of Porthcrawl are largely deserted as you move your goods in the evening. I'll just show you the map of Porthcrawl. Uh, Sasha, can you reduce your, our gold by two silver and five copper? Two silver and five copper. Yeah. Okay, so I'm hoping you can all see the map of Porthcrawl. Yep. Yes. Okay, splendid. So you move your goods, you park your cart up the side of the church. You do meet a, a sort of a few people who are milling around in the street, but they're just sort of people going about their business. You're some people driving a cart around. It's not exactly an unusual sight. They, they just sort of nod to you and like put their hands up and they carry on about their own business and leave you to get on with yours. You obviously wait for there to be no people about and you grab all your stuff out of the priest's quarters in the church and you start loading it into your cart. 
besides that, is there anything you guys wish to do while that's taking place? No. No. Okay, no problem. And you start driving your cart back towards Marku's house. Can I ask you to roll me another d6, please, William? Yeah, sure. A four. Okay, your journey is uninterrupted. Again, you see a couple of people, but they're just like... People driving a cart happens like all the time in Porth Cross. They just like put their hands up to you or like get out of the way and let you pass. And you pull up outside the front of Marku's house. It's a fairly small house, to be honest. Nothing particularly grand about it. Yeah, but we just want to store stuff in there. I mean, they, they might see a lot of carts being drawn around town, but how many carts are being drawn by Odrin, the fabulous? <laughs> <laughs> they already saw him a couple of times. Um, we will. Okay, we'll take. Okay, well, just let me stop you there. As you guys are sort of rumbling back towards Marku's house, just as you're sort of like coming round the corner, sort of here on the map, if I can ping it, so sort of here. Yeah. As you're turning onto the road that leads past Marku's house, you can hear like a, a sort of a banging sound, and you hear this you hear this female voice shouting, "I know you're in there, come on out! You can't hide from me forever." At his house, it, indeed. As yeah, you, does it sound like a woman? It, it actually sounds like the like the coffee. landlord's <laughs> wife from the the tavern. And as you turn around the corner in your cart, you can see her with sort of tears down the corner of her face, like hammering her tiny fists on the doors, the wooden door of Marku's house, shouting, "Come out of there, you coward! You can't hide from me forever! I thought we had something!" Like hammering on the door, you can see like a few people have stopped and they're like, uh, "Okay." At first, <laughs> that's just looking a little confused. Um, I guess we need to get rid of her. Um, no, William, just talk to her. Um, I point. I pointed her. Just talking is your job. Um, okay, <clears throat> Sasha will. Um, go I can talk her. to her. That's okay. I imagine you're like patting your cudgel as you say that. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, let me get my discussion stick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bigger club. Uh, he make he makes great points with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my stick is called diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sasha will uh, will leave the company after card and go up to uh, the distressed puppy. Okay, no problem. Just give me a moment. I'm going to put your guys' tokens on the map. So I'll put you there, Sasha. And I'm just going to sort of like cluster the rest of you guys around the the bit of the road, the sort of T-junction of the road. Although, obviously, I'll stick Barden next to Sasha because they're, like, joined at the hip, so... Okay, so you head up to the, the quite clearly distraught Poppy, Sasha. Like I say, she's hammering with a little tiny fists on the, the wooden door of Marku's house. <clears throat> What's happening, Poppy? She turns around to you. You can see that there's, there's moisture at the corner of her eyes, and she's obviously been crying. You see the tracks of tears down her cheeks. Her hair is slightly disheveled and wild. She, she looks at you and she says, "Oh, oh, oh!" And she, she, she breaks down into tears and almost like falls into, to your arms. Which, given that she's fairly small, she's about the same size as you. To be perfectly honest, she says, "Oh, he, he's, he, he's kicked me out. I, 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 I don't know where to go." Brock. She oh. she nods, but um, her sobbing causes her words to catch in her throat. Oh, I see. Uh, maybe, maybe he just needs some time off. 
Oh, it, it's happened before when, when he has far, far too much to drink. Uh, we, we fight too much. Uh, but, but this time, when he, when he raised his hand to me, I, I, I wasn't going to stand for it. And uh, when he started threatening, I, I, I left. I, 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 had th I had thought that... Uh, the, the young gentleman she gestures with her hand at the door of Marcus's house might might have taken me away from here and, uh, and all this. I, 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 th I thought we'd, sh we'd shared something special, but he won't even answer the door. And she just breaks down into sobs. I would just but walk up to Sasha and uh, whisper in her, in her ear, should I take care of this problem? Sasha looks at him and shakes her head <clears throat> and puts her arm around Bobby. Oh, I'm I'm sure he'll be he'll come around. Uh, let's let's get you out of the out of the road and um we'll go um we'll go back. I'm sure he'll come down by now and she leads her back to the siren's whisper. Okay, is anyone else going to the siren's whisper or is it just Sasha and Poppy. Um, I could try to unload. I'm stealthy, so. Okay. I guess I'm sticking with Bard. the wagon. Yeah. Or the cart. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, so Barden will come with you. Sasha and Audrin is staying with you, William. Okay. Yeah, we would just try to unload stealthily. Okay, so you you can see that like, how are you planning on gaining access to Marco's house? Um. They'll use diplomacy. <laughs> exactly. We have a great act. Uh, and, I, and I've got a crowbar, and I, I think we will get in. Uh, Just I a minute of time. Yeah, I mean, if you if you guys say you want to break in, you'll mm. be able to break in. You've got the kit and the skills and the brute force to like, overcome a, a I, I wooden would try door. to do it because I think I could do it silently. Yeah. I think okay. you go first. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely fine. Can you so, please make me an open doors roll? So once you once you've broken up the door, you notice that potted plant with a key under. I'm fairly <laughs> yeah. certain it's normally it's a craft roll or something. Tinker, I think normally. Well, well I guess it depends on your idiom. Like for me, it would be open doors because I'm trying to just force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I, when I did read it right correctly, it's, I think it's Tinker, but oh, well, if you have the tool, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. I don't have the stuff, so I just roll Tinker. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's friends. fine. Yeah, and a failure. Okay, you you spend a few moments sort of like tinkering around with the door. However, despite its slightly rickety appearance, it actually appears to be a fairly good quality, and you're not able to jimmy the lock open. One time, I actually miss Marco. <laughs> Want me to take a take a turn? <sighs> Try to be silent. <laughs> <laughs> if you just laugh, I, I try it again. <laughs> uh, okay, so are you like holding your tinker's tools out to him? Is that what you? No, I, I hold my crowbar to him. But all oh, right, okay, yeah. So I take the crowbar and then I try to kick the door in. <laughs> so, so you're you're just like balls to the wall, like kicking it in, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm kicking. Uh, the, um, everyone uh, knows that locks are against the uh, Dagon. So, Doc. yeah, Dagon is for free movement of the workforce, which we most definitely are. <laughs> okay, let me just check this. If if he does make too much noise, I would just scream, we will get you, you elvish bastard. Okay, so it's a wooden door. To break it down is going to take you a single turn, and it will be fairly noisy. Okay, can I try open doors first, or is open doors more nuanced? <laughs> just yeah, I mean, nice. like I say, if, you, if you're just trying to break it down, it, it'll take you a yeah. turn. You won't have to make a roll, but obviously it's quite okay. noisy. Okay. Mm. But but it, but if you want to try and like do it with a little bit more finesse, y you can make an open doors roll. Which, given that you get to add your strength modifiers to it, mm -hmm. probably isn't that bad yeah. for you. Yeah, it's my only. 
on this guild. Okay, so you're doing an open doors roll, so you get to add your strength modifier to it. And yeah. also, because you're using a crowbar, you get to add an additional one to it. And you also get... To... Oh, oh, success. Well. Splendid. Okay, so you take the crowbar, you put your shoulder to the door and mm -hmm. lean heavily on it. And after a few moments, there's a... <coughs> and the door just... Opens mm. up. And I, I look to William as if to ask, how did I do? Give me my crowbar. I hand it back. Mm. I should have taken a better body. And I walk back to the stuff and uh, try to unload. Yeah, that's not a problem. You can start unloading your stuff into Marku's house. Um, Wait, you don't see any sign of Marku while you're doing it. Can we end it here? Would yeah, it all, all I'm going to do is just for the, the last 10 minutes, I'm just going to do a quick sort of finish off with what Sasha's doing, and then that mm -hmm. will be the end of the session. So, you guys, you head back to the Sirens Whisper Tavern. Mm -mm. And as you get there, you can see that it's all shut up. Okay, but as she walks down, she is so. She uh, the way she understands it is that Poppy had a brief affair with Marco, and Brock found out, and they had a fight, and he threw her out. Is that correct? That that's your understanding, yeah. Okay. Tavern wins this month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you, you arrive at the the tavern, it's all shut up. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, and it, it's, there's no light or anything? Not as far as you can see. Mm. Do you have a key? She looks at Pop. P Poppy looks at you and she shakes her head and says, but, but I, I've normally got one, but but, but, but I, I didn't think to, to, to grab it as I, as, as I stormed out. I didn't realise he was going to lock the whole damn place. Oh, that, that's, that's understandable. Um, Biden, maybe you could stay here with her while I try to find a way in. Oh, y y yes, of course, Miss Sasha, if you, if you think that's for the best. Um, she looks to her backpack and she has one bottle of poor wine left that she hands Poppy. Poppy takes it with sort of slightly shaking hands and she starts like drinking a little bit of it. And. I'll go around. I'll, I'll of course take, like, test the door to see if it's indeed is locked. And if it is, she'll go around where they they delivered the the casks of wine when they first came to to town to see if that's open. Okay, the door is indeed locked. You head around the the back to where the wine was delivered previously. You can see that that door also appears to have been shut and locked okay so take out one of her pistols and flip it and use the the handle to knock on the door uh, okay you bang on the door for a few moments the you hear a voice from inside go <laughs> you can't really tell what it's saying but it doesn't sound like it's a compliment through the door then you hear like heavy footfalls towards the door the door is flung open and you see the quite large glowering form of Brock sort of towering above you looking down at you. What do you want? We're closed. Yeah. She looks at him and she, she steps towards him and kind of puts the pistol into its uh, holster again and she pokes him right in his chest. What kind of man are you putting your woman out? He, le he leans down to you and he says, What kind of woman's unfaithful to the vow she made before God? If I ever get my hands on that elf, I'm going to wring his scrawny neck for him. Oh my God, you stupid, stupid man. Don't you understand? It's you, she laughs. And as the elf just used some weird elven glamour to turn her head. Uh, at which point, as you say that, he, he does seem to sort of like... 
he, he reaches down to like one of the water troughs uh, nearby the backyard and he like splashes some water on his face and he goes I, I should have known and he, he storms back inside he reaches down behind the bar and he comes up with like a, a wooden cudgel he just like pushes past you and he goes yeah. to, i'll teach him to to insult yeah. all my wife with his damn blasphemies and he storms off down the street and that is where we are going to end this evening's session as you're sort of like looking down the street like wait yeah. wait and he's like i'm gonna kill that elf with his wooden cudgel and that is where we fade out and the credits begin to roll so thank you very much for playing this evening guys i hope you all enjoyed the session i will thank you. i will i've got the xp sort of written down i just need to total it up but i to say because i know you've got to get going johannes e yeah. i will total that up and i'll post it on the facebook group afterwards sure so not a problem i'm happy to chat to the rest of you guys for a little bit but You're obviously quite. i know you need to get going johannes so take yep. care and we shall see you thank soon. you and good night good it night. was fun bye see ya